good Wednesday morning. It's February 10th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last. You can find Nature Bats Last at GuyMcPherson.com. I would strongly encourage you to go there upon seeing this video on YouTube so that you can track down the four papers to which I have links. All right, the first of them is at EcoWatch. It's titled Record Rainfall Linked to Surging Methane Emissions in East Africa. It was posted last Thursday, and it explains in non-scientific language, that is, without confusing scientific jargon, positive interactions with respect to climate change. The term they use is compound event or compound events. There's no link to this paper to the peer-reviewed paper that I'm going to primarily discuss in this short video. But the first link within this paper leads to a peer-reviewed paper in Nature Climate Change. The important part from this paper is the huge understatement concerning methane. The paper specifically includes this line, methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that traps heat 28 times more effectively over a 100-year period than carbon dioxide, according to NASA. And that's right, if we had 100 years, or if we were able to measure over 100 years, but in fact, methane is being released into the atmosphere at an increasing rate, and it's at least 150 times more powerful a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide is at a relatively short scale. As long as it keeps going up, in terms of concentration in the atmosphere, we're not going to hit that 28 anytime within your lifetime or mine. As I indicated, the first paper referenced with a link to this paper in EcoWatch is a peer-reviewed article in Nature Climate Change from May 14th, 2018. So almost two years ago, it's called Future Climate Risk from Compound Events. It includes some important information. The abstract begins like this. Floods, wildfires, heat, waves, and droughts often result from a combination of interacting physical processes across multiple spatial and temporal scales. The combination of processes is referred to as a compound event. Traditional risk assessment methods typically only consider one driver and or hazard at a time, potentially leading to underestimation of risk as the processes that cause extreme events often interact. And this is important because although they call it a compound event here, what they're really talking about is an interaction, as it's called from other scientists. The main part of the article begins with this, and it's an excellent example of a positive interaction between phenomena. In the summer of 2010, Russia was struck by an unprecedented heat wave. Below normal precipitation in the first seven months of the year induced a summer drought that contributed to the exceptional magnitude of the heat wave. The extremely dry and hot conditions led to widespread wildfires, which damaged crops and caused human mortality. The wildfires also induced large-scale air pollution in cities such as Moscow, leading to the death toll caused by the adding to the death toll caused by the heat wave. The incidents in Russia in the summer of 2010 can be termed a compound event, what I would call an interaction, involving the co-occurrence of multiple dependent hazards, drought, heat, fire, and air pollution. In combination, these hazards caused devastating impacts in many areas at a scale well beyond that which any one of these hazards would have caused in isolation. So I think it's important to point out that these interactions are going on, have been going on for a while, and they greatly magnify the impact of, for example, a single event. The next paper I included the blog post at Nature Bats Last is actually referenced from the EcoWatch paper, the top one there, and it's in phys.org. It's from last Wednesday, and it's titled Huge Methane Emission Rise Follows Extreme Rainfall in East Africa. And this paper at phys.org actually does provide a link to the peer-reviewed paper in question. The important part of the phys.org paper is this. 
the authors found the additional emissions in 2019 were large enough to account for over a quarter of the global annual increase in methane emissions. So that's a major admission regarding emissions. And then finally, we get to the peer-reviewed paper in Environmental Research Letters, Rain-Fed Pulses of Methane from East Africa During 2018-2019 Contributed to Atmospheric Growth Rate. And the take-home message is from the final couple of lines in the abstract of this paper. We find the additional short rains emissions were equivalent to over a quarter of the growth in global emissions in 2019, highlighting the disproportionate role of East Africa in the global CH4 budget. CH4, of course, is chemistry speak for methane. So there you have it, a, a positive interaction, what they call compound factor, having far greater impact than any single phenomenon alone. I think it's very important to point this out. It's something that ecologists have been aware of and have been studying for many decades. And it's great to see this sort of thing appear in the climate change literature after such a long time. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for staying tuned. And we'll try to produce another one of these for next week.